Hello and welcome again. Uh, in the last video, we talked about the generation of the public key and the private key for the DSA uh, uh, signature. Now, in, uh, in this video, we'll talk about how to actually perform the signature algorithm for the DSA. Uh, last time, we generated this public key and the private key using, using Java for a more realistic situation. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to describe how we're going to actually sign messages in the DSA. So remember the setup here is you have uh, Bob publishes the public key, which is P, Q, Alpha, and B. Now those are the prime numbers, Alpha is the generator, and B is uh, Alpha to the private key. And the private key is just a number D. And remember the signature algorithm for all the signatures is always taken as an input, the private key, the message, and in this case, the signature algorithm for the DSA is going to produce also a pair of numbers, which are R and S. So this will be the signature that corresponds to that message that you see there. So this is the, this is the algorithm, so, so how to generate the signature. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to produce an ephemeral key that, of course, by the name, you're supposed to use this one uh, just one time, if possible. So this should be a random number, a true random number uh, between 0 and Q, where Q is that um, a prime number of 160-bit length. So we choose uh, the ephemeral key there. That will be step number one. So step number two will be to do this uh, double modular exponentiation, which is you take the generator alpha to the ephemeral key, the one that you already chose in number one, you do that modulo p, this is the modulo of the big prime, and then the answer of that, you now take again the modulo of the small prime. So you do um, modular exponentiation here, and this is just to uh, take the modulus, the remainder, once you do this modular exponentiation. So that would be actually r, that would be part of the signature. So the first number of the signature is produced in step number two. So now we move to step number three, which we now produce the second part of the signature. And this is the part where um, we actually have to sort of like wave our hands a little bit here. And the reason for that is because up to this point, we have not discussed uh, the true nature of has functions. The has functions are actually a very important part of the signature algorithm for the DSA. And, uh, now, we're going to discuss that later, but for now, that is a, a has function, which you, you're going to think about as compressing the the message m in this case you're going to apply a has functions to the message m whatever that message is which is of course a number and it's going to generate in here a 160 bit um, compression of that message so even if the message is extremely long the has function is going to compress it into a smaller size and so that's part of the computation of s here so this is s s h a is the hash that we're gonna apply to this message M, which is gonna call it just like that, but it's just a hash function. So whenever you see this hash function here, just think about it as the compression. So you put something really big and you compress it into M. It's sort of like a signature, if you, if you will, also for M. And that's gonna add a little bit more security to the algorithm. So we do that in here and then plus the private key, which is D times R, which was computed already in the previous step. Uh, the inverse of the ephemeral, the ephemeral key. Now, this ephemeral key that is here is the inverse modulo Q. And this inverse will all, always exist because uh, Q is a prime number. So the GCD between uh, the ephemeral key and Q will be 1. So you can always do this computation here. Now, the only thing you have to believe me for now is this hash function, how it works. So we're going to just postpone that for, for later. Now, as I mentioned, that the, uh, the hash function will compress the message M into a 160 bit, uh, you can call it fingerprint, or you could also think about it as a signature, sort of, sort of signature. And that's it, that's the generation algorithm. So the pair of numbers that you get out of there, the R and the S, uh, this R that is here and the S that is here, those are, the, that pair of numbers could be the signature for, for the given message M. All right, so, what we're going to do here is, uh, first I'm going to give you an example with small numbers, and I'm going to call that an artificial example because this is not really 
what you will do in real life. So I'm artificially giving you uh, an example just to make sure that uh, how to you understand what we are doing with this uh, signature algorithm. So let's see the example here, which is artificial means you're not going to do this. This is not how it's done in real life. So suppose that Bob wants to sign this message. Then let's say the message is 612. And we're going to use this public key, which is a P, Q, alpha, and B. And these are the numbers for P. This is a prime number. This is also a prime number. This is a generator for a subgroup of order Q and 10, 19. So basically means alpha to the Q will be 1. And this is the smallest exponent for which that happens. And B is the alpha to the private exponent, which we're going to choose in this case is 186 so this will be the private exponent so this is only this uh, private key is known only to bob and i'm saying that this is artificially because in the real dsa this prime should be 1020 uh 1024 bits and this could should be 160 and they are not so that's why i'm calling them artificially but let's go ahead and do the computation so th the first step will be to choose the ephemeral key which is any number between 0 and q so in the, our case, Q is 509, as you can see here, that's the Q. And so we choose, for example, let's say we choose 45. You can choose any number there. This is a random number in there. And then the step two, which is one modular exponentiation that's going to compute part of the signature, which is R, is going to be alpha to the ephemeral key modulo the large prime and then modulo the smaller prime. Now the generator for us is 180. Uh, the ephemeral key we chose in step one that was 45 modulo the large prime but not large but bigger prime and then modulo the smaller prime now if you do this modular exponentiation either using uh, uh, one of the algorithms we already saw for fast modular exponentiation or you can put this in wolfram alpha for example you're gonna get 70 78 and then i do modulo 50 9. Now, in this particular case, because this exponentiation gave me 78, which is smaller than 509, I don't actually have to do anything. I get exactly the same thing, because remember, that gives me the remainder, and the remainder here will be 78, because uh, the quotient will be 0 in this case. So R will be 78. So now, finally, we go to step 3, which is uh, in this example, uh, and I'm going to emphasize that in here. And I'm going to say this, since this example is, is artificial, remember, because the primes are very small, we must artificially assign a value to this hash that is here. And so I'll have to hash 612. And I'm going to choose artificially 121. Why? Because I have to give you an example. So I'm going to just pretend that I get 121. In reality, you won't get a number this is small because this hash algorithm algorithm here produces a 160-bit signature. Uh, so this is too small to be 160 bits. But just for now, let's just go ahead and believe that this gives me 121, which is, of course, not the reality. So, but we have to do it like this, so because it's an artificial example. So the other part of the signature, which is S, will be the hash of my uh, message, which is, I'm pretending that is as 121 times the the private key times the other part of the signature and times the inverse of the ephemeral key and that's all modulo the smaller prime so in this particular case we have 121 the 186 is the private key 78 is the one we computed before and i have the ephemeral key which is was or is 45 inverse and this is all modulo 509 if you go ahead and do this computation here you will get 14629 and then you compute by that multiply by the inverse of 45 modulo 549. Now you can always do this inverse because this is a prime number and this is not um, a multiple of this. So what happens here is we can use the extended Euclidean algorithm to compute that inverse there. So if you don't remember that, you should have to go back and double check this uh, extended Euclidean algorithm to get the inverse. Now if you do actually uh, go through the extended Euclidean algorithm, you're going to find that the, the inverse of 45 is 181, and that's all modulo 509. So I finally, what I do is multiply this two, take the modulo or the remainder, and I finally get my S, which is 31. 
So then the signature will be the pair of numbers that I computed before, so the number R and the number S. Now remember the number R is 78 and the number S is 31. Again, I'm going to repeat this again, so just to make sure this is an artificial example. So this is not something that you will actually do in real life. In particular, the way in which I perform here this has function, it was just, I just made it up, basically. Just gave you a number, which is not what is going to come out from the S H A from that has function. But remember, this is an artificial example. Now, let's actually go then into the realistic example. And you will see why I gave you this first, the smaller one. So you can see what how this works. Because the numbers here in the realistic example are going to be really big. So let's say we have uh, the same situation. We have that Bob wants to sign this message with his public key and private key. So the public key is always PQ, alpha and B. These are prime numbers, alpha generator and B is alpha to the private key, which is D. And these prime numbers, if we are gonna use DSA for real, this P has to be 20, 1024 bit, 650, and this is gonna be really, really large numbers. And let's see what I have here. So. As you saw in the previous video, we could do the generation of P, alpha, uh, P, Q, alpha, and B, and the private key. All of them we can do it do it uh, using Java, and you can use it also in the other languages. You can, I'm sure, other languages will have libraries uh, that you can use to generate uh, these parameters. So for the ones because we are using Java, then we can you to go back to the previous video and, and see how you generate those primes. So I'm going to generate a prime number, which is 1024 bit. And as you can see here, this is the prime number that uh, actually Java generated for me. And so this, as you can see, this is really not a large number. It's 1024 bit prime number. And you can double check that that is a prime number. Uh, the program that we did in the last video also uh, generates the prime Q, which is a little bit smaller, but still is not, uh, is, is not small for our human standards, let's just say, for the everyday things that we do. So this is a um, 160-bit prime number, as you can check that. And this is what Java gave me. Now, also, you can also check that Q divide P minus 1, which is a requirement in the DSA uh, signature. The, the parameters, uh, the prime Q has to divide P minus 1. Alpha will be the generator of that subgroup of CP star um, of size Q. And what I mean by that is this alpha that is here, which is also a big number, which in this case is not a prime number because you see it ends at zero. So it's not a prime number. But it is, in fact, a generator of some uh, subgroup of, or, of order Q and CP star. So what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that when you take this alpha to the Q modulo P, you get one. That's the first thing. And the second thing is all these powers that are here, one on alpha and alpha to the q minus 1, uh, they all of them give you different numbers. So there are q elements here, if you count there. And this is embedded in CPU star. So group is something that we talked about a little bit. And if you if you don't know, don't know what that is, don't worry. You don't have to understand that. The only thing that you have to understand is that alpha to the q is 1, and these powers here are all different. And they all live in CP star, this, this collection of elements here. So that's alpha. That's also, of course, given by by Java in our case. And B uh, is just a model exponentiation, which is the alpha that you see here, this alpha to the private key, which I want to show you in a second. So the private key here is also this number here. So this is my B here. All the numbers that you saw before, P, uh, P, Q, alpha, and B, those are the public key. And the private key is something that Bob has to keep to himself. So this will be the, the private key. And we can check that B is actually alpha to the modulo P. So that's not difficult to check, um, even if the numbers are really huge. Okay, so let's uh, let's sign this message that we want to sign. This message is the same 612. So the first step, remember, what you need to do is you're going to choose the F metal key between 0 and Q. Q here is going to be large number. So I'm going to say, for example, that I get this number here, which is a number between 0 and Q. Um, the second step is to do a modular exponentiation, which is, remember, alpha to the F metal key, then modulo P, and then do another 
modulo, which is the modulo the smaller prime. If you actually do this, so alpha is uh, this huge number that you see here. This is the alpha to the heavy metal key. So you will actually have to do this with a uh, computer. So Java could do this very easily. It doesn't take that much time. Even though these um, numbers are huge, it will just give you an answer in uh, much less than a second. So this guy actually gives me 158 bit length. Um, now we can also compute, now I can actually give you the real uh, hash function of that. Um, so for this, I also have to use a computer. Of course, I have not explained what this means and we will do that later. For now, just believe that when I apply these hash functions to any message, to any number, it doesn't matter how small or, or big it is, it's going to produce for me a fingerprint of about 160 bit length. So when I apply the hash function to this one, this is the actual number that I get out of the actual hash function, which is this one. And that is, um, I believe that's also about 160 bit length, more or less. And so now we can actually compute the rest of the signature in this particular case, which will be the hash applied to M plus the private key times the previous part of the signature, the ephemeral key inverse, and that's all modulo Q. So these are huge numbers. You see this one here is this number. Uh, D was also kind of big. R is big. This DF metal key is also kind of big. So I'm, I cannot just type or tell you what numbers are here. I don't have room to do it. But I can actually give you the answer. So when you do this, uh, you can do that in Java. So you're going to get uh, this number here when you're using the hash that get out of, that comes out of here, which is this number over there. So I get that S there. So the signature will be RS, and that signature is each of the elements here is about 160 bit length, and that's the purpose of the, the signature. So the signature will be this pair of numbers, which will be about, the whole signature will be about 320 bit length. So that's, that's how the signature of this algorithm works. All right, so I will stop the video now, and in the next video, we'll talk about the verification algorithm for the DSA. So I will see you in the next video.